the juicy part. <laughs> Four billion years ago, our planet Earth is born. Oh, but you'd never recognize her. She's just a spinning disk of stardust, a baby of a planet. And when she gets bigger, about teenage size, strange things <coughs> begin to happen. Meteors and comets crash into her, and volcanoes erupt from her planet. Growing up is never easy. 
<laughs> so there she is, our planet Earth, traveling at the speed of 67,000 miles per hour, circling the sun. Not too close, or she would burn. Not too far away, or she would freeze. Just close enough to fall in love. This is the beginning of the greatest love story we have ever known. The enduring love affair of Earth and Sun. Earth is madly in love with Sun. She loves his light, his heat. And Sun loves the way this pearl of a planet dances around him every day. It's one of those long distance romances. <laughs> no ordinary love letter will do. So Earth summons her messengers. The north wind, the south wind, the east and the west wind. You know what is in my heart, she says to the winds. Go and sing to that bright star in the sky. Go and tell him of my love. The winds sing. Oh, their song is so beautiful, so heartbreaking. And Sun returns his love with four billion tons of heat and energy every second. And as Sun embraces Earth, she becomes fruitful. Life blooms in the salty wombs of her seas. And green things sprout on the hills and meadows. Breaking of dawn <coughs> opens your eyes. The breaking of your heart picks you and wise. to imagine that a rock could dream of becoming an island, a beautiful green island with ferns and cedars, but that's exactly what she's dreaming. And as she says, bon voyage to the last glacier, the sea level begins to drop, and Bowen Island, like the sea goddess that she is, rises from the sea. It's scarred and barren, but full of possibility. She feels the warmth of sun on her face, his love pouring over her, taking the chill out of her bones. And for thousands of years, she dresses herself in splendid green. And she dreams of plump frogs calling to their mates, of whales and songbirds. You are 
one with the stars. From where you begin, every creature on earth is your kin. You are one with the day, one with the night. Only in the darkest sky do the stars shine bright. loves her voices in the sound. <laughs> she wants more. She dreams of drums and fiddles and community choirs. <laughs> she has a plan. She makes her trees so tall they touch the sky. She fills her bays and coves to overflowing with salmon and herring and clam. And then she waits. arrive in their long canoes. They build their summer villages on her shores. The sea blesses them with salmon and seaweed. The forest blesses them with fruits and berries, with cedars for canoes and baskets of clothing. They thank the island for her gifts. They take only what they need. And in the evenings, they gather ground. They know it's the sound of a place, the music of a place that makes it what it is. <laughs> that sounds you. <laughs> this island has been given many names. Apodaca by a Spanish explorer, the place where the deer were born, the happy isle, the rock. And it wasn't that long ago that an Englishman a captain somebody or other named it Bowen after a war hero who was never lucky enough to see this Emerald Isle. Seems to me you want to give your home a name that takes its power and magic from the place itself. That's why we call the, the waters that surround this island the Salish Sea. There's music in those words. The music of the sea as it dances across the shore pebbles. The rising tide, the falling rain, return to sing their stories once again. The ocean breathes, the rippling streets all murmur softly in their golden dreams.
my dad this weekend, but he had to work again, and my mom's bummed out. I wish they just quit arguing. I'm almost 16 years old, and that's a long time to be breathing. And what have I done? <laughs> Who knows? I could die tomorrow, and I haven't even lived yet. I want to meet exciting people. I want to do something important. It's just the same old thing around here. I want surprise. How's this for surprise, Duncan? You're actually older than 15. Think about it. <coughs> the atoms in your body are, are billions of years old, as old as the stars. <coughs> sure. I'll remember that the next time my dad tells me that's my age. <laughs> How'd you know my name? I'm Raven. I know these things. And I know there's a big dream shaping you, Duncan. Just may take a while before you know what it's going to look like. Yeah. So far, I just keep waiting and nothing happens. Time marches on. Ha! You sound just like your grandfather. I do. Peas in a pod. Tempest fugit. Time marches on. Oh, he loved to say that. But oh, what dreams he had. He grew up just over there. And when he was about your age, this meadow was a dairy farm. Prized purebred Holstein cows grazed this field. And before that, before your great great grandfather came to this island, ancient firs and hemlocks stood watch over this place. And there were wolves and cougars. So what happened to them? We couldn't figure out how to live with them, so we shot them. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear wolves. The trees look different, bigger, taller. Oh dear, it's <coughs> happening again. What? Sometimes when I speak about the past, it becomes, well, vivid. And that means? That means we're going back in time, Duncan. Time marches on. Time marches back. But I have a soccer game. <laughs> How long will I be stuck in the past? Uh, I don't know. I haven't quite worked that out yet. Well, look who's there. They look odd. <laughs> That's Duncan and Laura, your great-great-grandparents. I remember seeing pictures of them in the photo album, but Mom never talks about them. Well, it looks like Duncan's getting up his courage to tell Laura something. Hmm. There's something I've been wanting to tell you, Laura. Yes? Well, I've never had a chance to be alone with you before. We're alone now, Duncan. <laughs> Isn't he a fine-looking man? And Laura, such a beauty. You come from good stock, Duncan. <clears throat> yes, well... <laughs> I don't quite know where to begin. Well, the beginning is wherever you decide to begin. That's what I like about you school teachers. You surely know your way around words. <laughs> what is it you'd like to tell me, Duncan? I'm going away. You're going away? To Bowen Island. I bought myself a stump ranch. I need to move on, make a life for myself. A settler's life is a mighty fine life, it's the only life for me. No more will I work as a hired hand, got me a nice piece of property. Laura, there comes a time when a man has got to go to a place 
that he can call his own and watch his children grow. Watch his children grow? Watch all of his children grow. A settler's life is a mighty fine life, living off the land. Tame the forest, plow the field, make a living with my own hands. Laura, won't you come to the land of mountain and sea? Fish are plenty, people are scarce, trees are tall, as the eye can see. Trees as tall as the eye can see. Taller than the eye can see. A settler's life is a mighty fine life. A settler's life is a mighty fine life. And you'll be there with me. Mrs. Dorman, this is my wife, Laura. We're both real glad to be here. Duncan, how would you like to go fishing with me tomorrow? They're biting off the point just now. Oh, thanks. I like that. <laughs> Don't worry, my dear. <coughs> You'll do just fine here. We have social evenings every Friday night. This week at the Smiths, Irene is going to play some of your favorite Irish tunes. And you'll meet Mrs. Galbraith and Mrs. Grafton. They're more your age, I guess. That sounds lovely. This is the general store. That's Mr. and Mrs. Davies that run the store. My husband helped to build it. You'll find just about everything you need there. And the school? Mr. Dorman helped to build that one too. A one-room schoolhouse in the woodshed at the back. Nothing fancy, but a place of learning for 23 children. And for a special treat for the children, my husband bought a merry-go-round. Mm. It's very modern, propelled by a steam engine. <coughs> The calliope plays three melodies. I'd love to hear it. I can't help but hear it. It's right there at the picnic grounds. But not today. Today is Sunday, of course. He never plays it on Sunday. Of course. <laughs> Camp. They say a fuller can make two dollars a day. I'll stay here, work my own land. I remember what Jacob Dorman told me. Hard work never hurt anyone. <laughs> Thinking about it, did. They had no fire department like we have today. 
that house burnt to the ground. But islanders have always known how to support each other. Duncan and his neighbors organized a building bee, and in no time at all, they put up another house. There's Laura in the kitchen, baking bread. I love working with the dough, being part of something alive and growing, like having children, only without the sleepless nights. <laughs> Making bread was easier in the city. The flour got delivered right to your door. On Bowen, it comes in a steamship, and they leave the sack on the dock. All 98 pounds of it. That's when the stone boat comes in handy. You strap the sack onto a sled and sweet talk the horse into pulling it along the logging road to your door. Then you drag it the rest of the way to the kitchen. We use every bit of everything here, even the flour sacks. They make nice tea towels. Now, to make really good bread, you need a constant temperature, something a wood stove never heard of. <laughs> it's all how you choose the wood. Alder burns hot and quick, maple burns nice and slow. When we first came to Bowen, we lived in a shack with no windows and a carpet for a door. Well, this house is a big improvement, built in what they call the post and shake style. When the wind starts to blow, the house shakes. <laughs> to get the best buyers out of the bread, I like to let it sit overnight. But the house gets cold and drafty. A bread dough's like a puppy. It needs to be kept warm. <laughs> well, I'll never forget the look on Duncan's face the first time I brought the dough into our bed. <laughs> <laughs> Settler's life is a mighty fine life, it's the only life for me. A settler's life is a mighty fine life, it's the only life for me. A settler's life is a mighty fine life. It's the only life for me. Hey. Well, what did you think of your great great grandfather? 
Why would he come to Bowen? Exciting <laughs> <laughs> in those days. He should have a big dream, but not my dream. Duncan, no two dreams are the same. Just as no two many things are the same. The universe also likes to come. You'll know your dream when you find out what it is that is calling to you. What it is you truly desire. Hey, this doesn't look like Bowen. What happened to the trees? We're in Tunstall Bay, about a hundred years ago. The virgin forest has been cut down. Back then, they didn't know that a tree is worth more than just a few pieces of lumber, that it takes thousands of years to grow a forest, <clears throat> that nature does it best. This is an explosive factory. Western explosives. Eighty men work here, packing dynamite. My darling wife, I hope this letter finds you well. I don't want to alarm you, but I've had an uneasy feeling all day. Things aren't as they should be here at the explosives plant. The men work long and hard. The air is filled with doom. I feel sorry for the Chinese men. They are even further from their loved ones than I am. Please be assured of my enduring love and affection for you and our three small children. I long to be with all of you soon. Your devoted husband, James. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Bert? There's a uh, rumblings among the men. What kind of rumblings? About the explosion, the one that killed William <coughs> and his crew. You don't have to remind me of that explosion, Bert. But, but, sir, the men are worried. They say some of the workers don't know the safety precautions. Are they wearing iron nail boots? And no, sir. They're not carrying matches, are they? No, sir. I've warned them about that. But what about the rest of the rules? The rule book is in English. The Chinese can't read it. I'll get one of the men to translate the damn book. Now get back to work. Then. I want that dynamite loaded and on the train by four this afternoon. Yes, sir. to Nanaimo. Five men died. Kwang Jung, South Gu, Ah Hien, Zhang Yung, and James Burton. The following year, they closed down the plant. All that remains are some of the brick foundations along the beach and the name Explosive Street. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Britannia, the most luxuriously appointed cruise ship in Hao Sound. There is no finer excursion boat sailing out of Vancouver. Her 104.8 feet of superb comfort can accommodate up to 300 passengers. What are you waiting for? Come aboard. Go ahead, Duncan. I don't really want to go. <laughs> you might have a good time. Why stay in the sweltering city heat? Get aboard the Britannia and come to Bowen Island, where you'll enjoy cool sea breezes, fine shady trees, clean water, excellent bathing, and one of the finest cafes on the coast. Stroll the bridal path across the exquisite Japanese bridge, where you can admire beautiful <laughs> bridal veil falls. Well, well, what have we here? Well, come aboard, my boy. Captain Cates of the Eternal Steamship Company, at your service. Thank you, Captain. We will be arriving at Snug Cove in about one hour. Enjoy your sea voyage, and let me know if there's anything I can do to make your voyage more comfortable. <laughs> Captain, I think I'm getting seasick. Nonsense. <laughs> No one gets sick on my boat. Count 
to 100 first. Then you could get sick. <laughs> Today we're sailing with the first Presbyterian Sunday school picnics. <clears throat> Last week, it was the Woodward's Company picnic. If I have my way, Bowen Island will soon become a summer pleasure garden for weary city folks. I love this island. I've traveled just about everywhere, and I can tell you there's no place like it on this earth. 88, 89, 90. What's that? 93, 94. No, no, my boy. You made a mistake at 88. You have to start all over from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> now, where was that? Did I tell you about the Chilean family that got caught in the Squamish? My, that wind was a blow. The whole family was stranded. The boat was a complete wreck. Right over there. That's the spot where it all happened. What'd you do, Captain? I tried for four days to get in with the Britannia, but that Squamish wouldn't let me. And during that time, wouldn't you know, the woman gave birth to twins. Well, I finally got in and got them out, all starving and soggy. <coughs> I went to check up on them a few days later, and wouldn't you know, they named one of the twins. <coughs> nice name for a child, don't you think? <laughs> Captain Cape? Yes, my boy? I'm not seasick anymore. <laughs> what did I tell you? Nobody gets sick on board the Britannia, even in the foulest weather. And I've seen weather. I remember the time the fog was thicker than peace. Oh, I'm a sailor up the sound. The sea swells high in my teeth. The fog rolls in and covers me eyes. Nothing can I see. Set for snug cold, a wall of white before me. I saw the fog hold loud and long. Afraid of the powers that be in that dark and gloomy night, I hear an awesome sound. Could that be an angel warning me to turn around? They say that angels sing, they say that angels weep, but here was an angel blowing his horn to rouse the dead from the sleep. Old Gabriel, he flew, here am I, God, to thee. Do you know that song, my boy? No, Captain. You heard of the Titanic, boy? Yes, Captain. That's the song the band was playing when she was swallowed by the sea. So I changed my course at once. Till I reach a safer harbor And I thank that angel every day For playing with such ardor Now some believe this tale Not one of them is a poor man Others think that Gabriel Was the son of Jacob Dorman Yes, some folks think that Gabriel Was the son of Jacob Dorman <laughs> We've got company. Whales. Humpback whales. Best singers in the world. I didn't know there were humpbacks in House Sound. Well, about a hundred or so. They say the sea is cold, but the sea contains the hottest blood of all. There they flow. Forty tons of mystery. But there's nasty business afoot, my boy. A whaling company out of Nanaimo. They've been coming into the sound, killing whales. But I warn you. I've written a letter to Ottawa. I've got to do something before it's too late. There they blow! Their haunting voice has not been heard since. 
How could they kill all the humpbacks? They didn't know what you know, Duncan. That all creatures have a right to live. That humans and whales are made of the same stardust. That a whale has its own destiny in the sea. A destiny apart from humans and our needs. Maybe they'll come back. Maybe. If House Sound would be clean again. If the waters would fill with their favorite foods, herring and krill. child living in another world? Something like that. Come on, Duncan. I think there may be someone here you'd like to meet. Are you feeling energetic? There's a bowling green, horseback riding, a saltwater swimming pool, boat rentals, and a golden sandy beach. Do you play tennis? We got the finest clay courts in the province. You're a bit young, but maybe your older brother might like to foxtrot the night away at our dance pavilion. The circular dance floor is the largest in British Columbia, big enough for 400 dancing couples. Wow, <laughs> Bone Island is a real party place. <laughs> Step right up, join the Madcap Merriman. What does it be? A balloon race, a horseshoe tournament, the three-legged race? How about the wheelbarrow race? Ready? <laughs> Set. <laughs> Duncan too. Same as my dad. Same as my granddad. <laughs> and the winners of the wheelbarrow race are Duncan and Duncan. <laughs> when you're a little older, my laddies, you'll want to take in the Moonlight Cruise on the Lady Alexandra on a Saturday night. Dance to the rhythms of Harry Price and his Merry Mariners. But take my advice. Don't drink the check room mix. <laughs> you might find yourself in the lockup overnight. <laughs> <laughs> this is much better than the prize I got last week. Last week I came in first in the sack race, and they gave me a pair of roller skates. Where am I going to go roller skating on Bowen Island? <laughs> <laughs> you live here? Yeah, I was born here. Oh. Hey, I've never seen you before. It's hard to explain. You look familiar to me. I've seen your picture. You look like my grandfather. Sort of. Do you like living on board? Oh, this is the best place in the world. The swimming's great, and the fishing, and you should join the camp kids. We go on hikes, and we have a great baseball team. There's only one thing I really don't like. What's that? Bubble and squeak. It's what my mother cooks every Friday night. Cabbage <laughs> and potatoes. Squeaks while it's cooking, and it bubbles in your stomach when you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. Tempest Future. Hot March is on. <coughs> You're pretty good. You should come back next Saturday and we'll try our luck in the three-legged race. <laughs>
Why are they going away? Because of a naval base in Hawaii named Pearl Harbor, a place the Yamadas and most other Canadians never heard of until it was bombed by the Japanese in World War II. The Canadian government orders all Western Canadian citizens of Japanese ancestry to be sent to internment camps in New Denver. The Yamadas lose everything. Their boat, their house, the cow, the chickens, everything. I wish I could speak to them. I tell them I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to go away. They heard you, Duncan. I hope you can come back. They never came back. Those voices and the sound were lost. <laughs> I've watched you. Why don't you give it a try? You're talking about those sunny boats of yours. Yes. Well, they look sturdy enough. A bit austere. Perhaps. But the sunny boats have been making people happy for over 20 years, carrying passengers from Horseshoe Bay to Snug Cove, Eagle Cliff, and Miller's Landing. Why, those little boats are Bowen Island's connection to the rest of the world. I have a good job at the Bowen Inn. But ever since I left London, <clears throat> I've had the yen for travel. Now you're talking, Mary. Oh, you'll love the run to Hood Point. Why, those poor folks. <laughs> Why, they'd be lost without the sandy boats delivering their groceries, their newspapers, and their mail. When you pull into the dock, they're already waiting to greet you, cheering and carrying on <laughs> like your royalty. <laughs> did she drive the sandy boats? She did. Mary Marshall was the first female sandy operator. She skippered those wooden boats for 10 years. And as she fell in love with the sea, she also fell in love with Tommy White. <laughs> and a few years later, they were married. <laughs> Snug Cove in the 1940s is a thriving company town, a union steamship town employing Bowen Islanders as gardeners, bellhops, waitresses, chambermaids, dairymen, and carpenters. In the summer of 1946, over 100,000 visitors come to the island. But times are about to change. The resort business starts to drop off. Ten years later, the hotel closes its doors. Bowen Island loses its most important industry. Snug Cove becomes a ghost town, and the islanders no longer have the services the union needs to provide. But Bowen Islanders are nothing if not resilient. They form the Bowen Island Property Owners Association, and on December 7th, 1956, we get regular ferry service summer and winter on the Blackwell Ferry. In 1957, the ferry carries automobiles. Life on Bowen Island has changed forever. The delightful pie shop run by the pie ladies, Miss Whitlaw, famous for her fruit pies, and Miss McManus, loved for her meat pies, becomes a memory. With the car ferry, people start buying the groceries in town. Bowen doesn't get its own newspaper until 1975 all the news and gossip that's fit to print. <laughs> Let's see what people are talking about in 1975. Hmm. Ferry problems, speeding cars, subdivision concerns, and unruly off-leash dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you never really know Bowen Island until you know her waters, her lakes, her creeks, and of course the salty Salish Sea. There's magic on this island. It's in the water. 
source of life and mystery. Water never dies, it just comes back with something else. Has rain, fog, tears. Did you know we had a water war on board? Here was people fighting about water, not just water fighting. In Eagle Cliff, they called it the Bluff Creek Water War. They had a long, hot summer, and many of the creeks had gone dry. So some of the residents in Eagle Cliff were drawing water from Bluff Creek. Well, the owner was furious. The man who owned the water license on boat on Bluff Creek was furious, and he hassled them every time they got near the creek. So one morning, a few thirsty residents armed themselves with shovels and sticks, and they marched down to the creek. The owner was waiting for them with his shotgun. And when one brave woman bent down to draw water from the creek, he fired his gun. What happened? Well, fortunately, no one was injured. But the judge balled out the owner for depriving his neighbors of drinking water. We can never take water for granted. Well, I'll be. If it isn't Stan James, the one with the cigar, I never thought I'd see him again. Townie, a developer from West Vancouver. <laughs> In the 1970s, he buys the Union Steamship Land. And he's got some pretty fancy plans for Snug Cove. For plans that would make the current Snug Cove plan look like a Buddhist retreat. <laughs> village. A subdivision of 2,000 houses. An 18-hole golf course around Killarney Lake. And a ski hill on Mount Gardner. As usual, islanders are divided. You have the slow growth people and the so-called moderates. I support slow growth on the island. Let's keep Bowen Island green. I agree with Ted Rogers and the other moderates. With logical and staged growth, Bowen Island's population could be somewhere near 20,000 to 25,000 people. The land Stan James wants to build on is agricultural land. I'm not against preserving farmland. <laughs> but who can make any kind of a, of a farm pay on Bowen? Besides the high costs, the deer would have eaten everything the first week. <laughs> My plans would provide much needed housing for Vancouverites who can't afford to live in the city. Hi, it's Lillian. Have you heard the news? No. Stan James has hired a bulldozer to clear the land before he has approval. He plans to clear cut the trees all the way to Killarney Lake. We can't let that happen. Here's the plan. Maisie and I are going to go down and stand in front of that bulldozer tomorrow morning. I hope you can make it. Keen and Stu will be there too. And Laura. Good. See you there. Now the action begins. This committed group of people decide to take a stand for what they value. Without their dedication, there would be no Crippen Park today. You never really feel at home until you live on an island. You feel an inner peace and a calm here. Maybe it comes from looking at majestic mountains as they plunge into the crystal blue depths of Howe Sound, or listening to eagles fly over a tranquil bay. Our development will make you feel right at home. And what we can't do, Bowen Island can. It's called the Island Experience. Save our trees! <laughs>
is always near when you're in the forest. For the last few weeks, we have sat in council with the others. Heron, owl, raven, deer, salmon, arbutus, cedar, and the mighty Opa. They asked that you be brought here. Why me? Because you're young and brave because you are full of possibility. Because some of your people think they're separate. They believe that they live apart from the rest of us. This makes them very lonely. They forget there's so much here to keep them company. So much beauty to lift the spirit. Killarney Lake! We celebrate! Mount Gardner! We celebrate! Cray on the beach! We celebrate! <laughs> that red-legged frog! We celebrate! <laughs> The cricket song. We celebrate. The heron's nesting. We celebrate. The spawning salmon. We celebrate. The inviting lagoon. We celebrate. The biting swan. We celebrate. <laughs> All the voices of the island must be heard if we are to live in harmony. Listen to the people of the earth. The standing people. The flying people. The running people. The swimming people. They are calling you brother. Ah, ah, ah. Is that 
Sono qua! before Sonoqua arrives. Sonoqua is coming here. Today, the forest spirits have brought us a boy. A valiant lad who has walked boldly into the past. May he walk boldly into the future. Jay, my sword, please. Have you seen her sword? <laughs> no. You? No. You had it last. No, I didn't. Ah, ah. Think of something. Healthy 
We've come to the end of our story. But the story of Bowen Island goes on. A story full of possibility. We are the dreamers, the actors who choose the plot, who shape this island in the Salish Sea. May we dream wisely. May we sing a worthy song. She dreamed of you. She dreamed of me. She dreamed of humpbacks singing in the Salish Sea. She dreamed of Heron, ancient cries in the night. She dreamed of mountains welcoming the morning light. She dreamed of Fiddle. She dreamed of Horn. She dreamed of choirs singing on the day I was born. She dreamed of laughter. Children played. She dreamed of crickets chirping on a summer's day. She dreamed of song, every voice, every song. And in our hearts, her dream was on. And now that we're here, now that we're here, what is the island dreaming now? She dreamed of song. Now I'll always 
always be a lover of the Salish Sea. As I paddle the coast of the rocky shore, watching the eagles and ravens soar, as I sing to the otter and sing to the seal, my heart will give thanks to the Salish Sea. Now I bring my tears to the Salish Sea. Wash me clean and set me free. Wash me clean. May I always be a crone by the Salish Sea. And if fate decides I must leave her shore, leave with the tide and return no more, I'll remember the days when my life was free and my heart set sail for the Salish Sea. My heart will set sail for the Salish Sea.